Hello everybody! My name is Andrew and welcome to Supposedly Wonderful Future. This game looks really interesting. I got the code from the developer and I can't wait to check it out. So let's jump right in. New game. Oh, that menu was pretty cool. Let's see. Have you ever imagined a day like this would come? You know, I probably have. I tend to wonder about all kinds of crazy stuff. The power of imagination, eh? Too bad I can't feel these things anymore. I'm just a sad and tired old man. A lonely failure at the top of the world. Is there anything I can do to make you reconsider? No, let's finish this. Hmm. We don't know who he's talking to. Prologue, an unlikely visitor. Wednesday, July 18th, 2018. Not your favorite way to start a story. The exact date is rarely that important. It's just a convention, you know? An arbitrary system made up by humans to count the Earth's rotations. Still, they say you have to understand your place in time and space. Then again, they say a lot of pretentious things. And usually, you can't even tell for sure who the heck they are supposed to be. That's a good point. Regardless, the day is young. So you decide to go with the flow and proceed into the office. The sun is shining seamlessly through the window, no doubt on its evil quest to sneak UV radiation past the ozone layer again. Ha <laughs> darn sun. You take a look around, slowly acknowledging the environment that didn't even exist six months ago, but already feels comfortably familiar. Your own business. No bosses, no rules, no bureaucracy. Only projects to use your skills on, and real clients to make happy. It's a tiny company, of course. Just two programmer friends who decided to go official. Nothing special. Thousands of people try to do the same thing all around the world. Still, even more people would call it crazy. Too risky, they'd say. No guarantee of success, no clear way to rise above the competition, and dozens of ways to go bankrupt. They would prefer the illusion of secure employment with crippling bureaucracy, pointless rules, and no sense of meaningful impact whatsoever, even if they hate it all as much as the next guy. And you're long away from proving those folks wrong, but you aren't proving them right either. The clients are coming, the clients are satisfied enough to keep you busy, and enough to keep you happy with your bank account. The clients have grand plans, and they trust you will turn them into a reality. Perhaps this is how good life decisions should look like. Daring enough to feel crazy, yet logical enough to be real. They say you need to step out of your comfort zone, but you don't have to do it every day. That's the thing about zones. Whenever you leave one, you very quickly find yourself inside another. Today, you can embrace the routine and keep making this new zone more comfy. As you look around, you notice the familiar blinking of the phone on your desk. It seems like Samuel, your fearless partner in crime, has left you a message. You should probably check it out if you're done admiring the surroundings. Will do! Oop. You have three new messages. Let's play the message from today from 9.54am. Hey Mike, this is from Andy from Gent. I checked things with the higher-ups yesterday. Unfortunately, IE7 support is a must. And yes, I'm going to say it out loud so you don't have to. We are the dinosaurs. Our OS is hopelessly outdated. And we can't even install an application without triggering a bureaucratic nightmare. I was hoping till the very end of our case might warrant an exception. It's a visualization system for heaven's sake, but they said no. And there's nothing I can do about it. Hopefully this will change as our cooperation bears fruit. But for now, I'm sorry to drop more work on you so close to lunch. Let me know how it goes in a couple of days, okay? Okay, man. Michael, this is Mitch. I think we need to make some design changes to the customer feedback form. The fields are a bit too wide, and the front just doesn't feel right. Also, would it be possible to change the calculation results on display? Specifically, I'd like the extra chunks to appear on the same page rather than in the pop-ups. I know there's not enough space, but maybe resurrect a bit. Maybe reconstruct a bit. Please let me know ASAP. Hey, dude. So I spent last night talking with expert guys, and it looks quite promising. They don't have any deadlines in mind and definitely worry more about quality than speed, which is just the way you like it. I've emailed you the details. 
might be hard to juggle both this and Gent, but hey, too much work is better than no work at all. Mm, don't worry about my part. I'm gonna code it till I drop. Speaking of parts, can you give me a raise? Yeah, I know, we manage our own raises. Just trying to give you a proper boss experience in preparation for our inevitable war conquering expansion. Okay, I'm gonna shut up now. Sam out. <laughs> That's Sam. Oh, somebody's knocking. Hello, welcome, l um, lady. You open the door to find a woman standing on your doorstep. She seems agitated and a little out of breath, with tiny beads of sweat showing up on her forehead. She looks at you and immediately lets out a sigh of relief. Morning, Mr. Morden. I'm so glad we finally found you. Oh, uh, sure. I was pretty maddening for a moment. A labyrinth of back alleys and weird intersections. Our records must have been wrong. I had no idea where I was going. Records can be unreliable like that. I know, but I thought we accounted for that and oh well, this is awkward. That's not that's not how I should have started at all, is it? You can try to start again if you want. I'm sorry about that, Mr. Morden. You're Michael D. Morden, aren't you? Yes. The thing is, I have a proposition for you, and I believe you will find it most interesting. Can I have a moment of your time to discuss it? My name is Jackie, by the way. Very well, come on in. Jackie. The woman takes a place on your couch as offered. Overall, it looks like she's managed to regain her composure. So, what can I do for you today? Just hear me out would be enough. Thank you. I do apologize for the sudden visit. Simply showing up on your doorstep is not a proper business negotiation to start, but my circumstances are quite restricting. Apology accepted. Thank you. Let's get right into it then. I'd like to offer you a job. We're packed with, pro with projects at the moment. I'm sorry. Oh no, not for a job for your company, mister. A job for you as a person. Okay, I'm interested. Um, you realize I work for myself full time, right? Absolutely, but you can still do both. The job specifics make it a very special case. It's useful to have a fallback plan, even if the main plan is working flawlessly. I suppose it won't hurt. Thank you. Now, Mr. Morden, the offer I'm about to give involves talking about rather unusual things. Things that might sound unbelievable at first. So here's a general plan I'd like to propose. First, I'll make a far-reaching claim, then we'll talk about it more in detail. You are free to ask questions to determine whether the said claim is true or not. In fact, I'd like you to. Then you get to decide if it's actually true. Does it sound like something you could spend a little bit of time on? Sounds harmless, sure, why not? Splendid! Mr. Morden, I come from the future. Okay, keep going. I work for a company called Life Plus, one of the leading experts in all things technological. Barely an hour ago, I traveled 30 years back in time because our scientists recently and quite unexpectedly to everyone but themselves, might I add, cracked the secret to time traveling. This is the first field test and you are our first contact. The job I'm offering involves coming back with me to 2048 and working together on a special project. Oh, okay. What kind of special project? Uh, you have to solve a series of problems with no possibility to turn back halfway through. It will be a mutually beneficial experience. You will learn about our society as you work with them. Um, when do you want me to start? I mean, <laughs> right after we finish this conversation, we can be in 2048 in less than an hour. Why the hurry? You have all the time in the world if you can travel it. It's not that simple. After altering the past requires a lot of preparation and calculations. The more time spent between our offer and your decision means more altering, and I'm afraid that's not something we can afford. It's just a limitation of our unique situation. Mm. Why would you need someone from the past to solve your problems? Two words, outsider's perspective. You're not part of our society, therefore you do not possess our dispositions and are completely free from bias. We believe this quality is important enough to justify the entire convoluted scheme. And when it ends, do I get out of it? Well, there are two options. Once you come back and return here to daily life, everything will remain the same, except yourself. We can't offer you any financial incentive, but on every other account, I will be a life it will be a life-changing experience, as you might imagine. And the other? 
You get to stay. You can join us in the future where science is stronger, society is better, and you can live a much longer and happier life. And why are you interested in me exactly? Because we want you to join us. We want to share a bright future with people of the past who work hard to make it possible. This is our way to use time traveling for the greater good. We owe our previous generations that much. In this case, shouldn't you go more than 30 years back? I'm 29. I, st I think I still stand a pretty good chance to join you conventionally. You won't. Excuse me? You are no longer alive in 2048. Time traveling is the only way for you to reach it, I'm sorry. You mean I died earlier? How? When? I can't tell you the details. Giving you information about the future is unsafe. I'm not sure how to react to that. I don't like people telling me that I'm gonna die sooner than 2048. You don't have to react at all. Just take into consideration when giving your final answer. Well then, tell me about your future. It's pretty awesome. No nuclear apocalypse, no ecological disasters, no machine uprising, no catastrophes at all? No, it's been pretty peaceful. Much more peaceful, in fact, than your current time. Regional conflicts and global tensions are solved in peaceful ways. Economic inequality has been reduced greatly. High school level education is available for everyone. Child mortality and poverty are exceedingly rare. The entire world has access to clean water, vaccination, and other necessities. Well, that's pretty cool. They seem to have solved everything. Oh, that's cool. Any flying cars? No, but we have had some amazing technological breakthroughs as well. For example, there is a matter of us not aging anymore. What? Sorry? Well, there's this medical procedure called cells and tissue renewal process, or just the renewal. Or however you want to call it. If you go through it, you stop aging for 10 years. After that, you can do it again, so it's possible to never get old. And, if you don't get old, your risk of age-related illnesses is reduced accordingly. Was that a fancy way to say life... Was that a fancy way to say live forever? Are you telling me you are immortal? You can use that term if you like, yes. It's definitely the closest we've ever been to immortality. That's crazy Austin, provided it's actually true. It is true. Even if it may sound like a wild fantasy, and there's no need to start searching for examples, I myself am 61 years old. What? Though I suppose there's no way I can prove it to you right now. But that changes everything, literally everything. I will eventually at the moment, however, most of the consequences are yet to come. It's been 15 years since the first successful trial, and much less since the renewal became commonly available. So people are still processing the idea. You don't have to worry about our society being too different from yours. Alright, let me summarize this. Yes? You come from the future, and it's allegedly terrific. I'm supposed to die earlier, but you can change that by taking me to live in 2048, and all I have to do in return is solve some kind of problems that you refuse to describe in more detail because it's all supposed to be a surprise? That's a very good summary, yes. And you're not joking. This is not a prank. You're just... You're not just messing with my head for the sake of it. No. And if I refuse, you will leave and I'll never see you again. Yes, we won't bother you anymore. Uh, well, in that case, yes. I don't really have a choice. If I say no, I'll be torturing myself with what ifs till the end of my days. So I guess I'm on board. Fantastic. Shall we then? Just give me a moment. No, a moment for what? Let's get out of here. Shall we get going? Lead the way, Jackie. Let's go. Chapter 1, Dimly Lit House. You leave the office together, an unlikely pair of a woman feeling out of place, and a man who is about to feel the same. Excitement and anxiety are battling inside you for attention. You wonder if your ability to drop everything and walk away with the first time traveling person you've met should be considered marvelous, disastrous, ridiculous, or all of these at the same time. I think... All of these at the same time, I'd say. <laughs> you make your way through the same alleyways of nearby buildings that must have made Jackie sweat earlier this morning. As back alleys change to busy streets, you notice that her nervousness is starting to return. After ten minutes of determined crowd maneuvering, you turn into another narrow passage where Jackie produces a miniature device from her pocket, apparently preparing to do whatever she needs to initiate a time jump. Five more minutes pass. You think the most natural preparation 
would be to find a secluded corner and make sure nobody's watching, but she seems more interested in catching her watch than looking around. But she seems more interested in checking her watch than looking around. As if simply standing at a certain spot at a certain time guarantees your privacy. Then she proceed then she presses a button on the device and you close your eyes. Funny, she didn't ask you to. You just felt the urge to close your eyes. Hmm. And then you find yourself elsewhere. The transition is sudden but smooth. It feels like waking from a dream. Was it indeed just a dream? Possible. However, you generally try not to fall asleep in unknown environments, and this dark place certainly qualifies as one. It looks like somebody's living room, but there aren't any people around, and there's no and there's no sign of Jackie either. As your eyes adjust to the poor illumination, you notice three separate doorways. Perhaps one of them will lead you to some answers, or at least an exit. Huh. Let's get out of here. Wait, what? At the center of the kitchen, you find a middle-aged, tired-looking woman sitting on a small stool. She seems to be lost in thought and doesn't notice you. Hello, anybody home? Who are you? Oh, hello. Don't mind me. I'm nobody. Do you live here? I think so. Do you need something? Um... Are you familiar with a woman called Jackie? Me being here appears to be her idea of a joke. Never heard of her. We don't get many visitors lately. Well, I'll leave you to your thoughts. Excuse me, have you seen a man around here? What do you mean? It's just that I'm waiting for someone, a man from the agency. They promised someone that would come to help. So I just sit here and wait. That's so creepy. No, no more men around, sorry. No, that's all right. Sorry to bother you. What the hell? What the hell? Okay, let's get out of here. This is really weird. Let's go in this one. Okay, let's check Umbrella. Uh, you should have known it was you, Umbrella. All this time, it was the umbrella! That explains it all. Judging by this collection of shoes, it's the summertime outside, or at least not a snowy winter. And here's the front door, at least you think it is, considering that it looks bigger and more sturdy than the other doors in the apartment. It has some kind of electronic lock with a shiny red circle on it, which might be an indication that the door is locked. Still, leaving the place sounds like a sensible course of action, so it shouldn't really stop you from trying. Try to open the door. It's really locked. You give the handle a good push, then a good pull, but whichever way it opens right now, it's firmly secured in place. Knock. Knocking didn't work. Force. Um, doesn't work. Examine. Place your thumb on the surface just in case it worked with your, sing with your fingerprints, but the lock doesn't grace with your... Yeah, okay, so our fingerprints doesn't work. Let's get out of here. What the hell? Let's see what's in here. Euthanasia. A peaceful exit. Your story. Your choice. Our life is a story. We choose how to tell it. And we like to do so on our own terms. There is happiness created with our family and friends. Appreciation of the days lived to the fullest. Satisfaction with the challenges conquered. Endless wonder about the world around us. And our place in it. And where we came from and where we go. There is pain as well. Sometimes it feels like there's much of it. Like it completely took over and now it tells a story of you. But this is an illusion. Pain has no power. It is at the mercy of your decisions. You can fight and endure it. You can also let it go. Make no mistake, this is not the end. Our stories are continued through time by all those affected. And then, in turn, by those who they affected. And so on. Far beyond the limitations of a single lifetime. But until that happens, no one can take it away from you. You're free to make the final choice of your story the way you want. Wow, and you, oh my god, and, and you have the pill right here. Does this pill do what I think it does? It, it sure does, man. Okay, let's get out of here. Another, what? 
small figure sitting on the bed looks at you with a curious expression. Hello. Hi there, little girl. I'm not little, I'm big and strong and smart. Uh, sure thing, big lady. What are you doing here? Probably something stupid. I always end up doing something stupid. You're funny, but mommy tells me not to talk to strangers. Yeah, mommy tend to, send, tend to say that. I know, we can just learn about each other. I'm Mitty, what's your name? Pleased to meet you, Mitty, I'm Michael. Hello, Michael. Are you okay talking with me now? Sure, we're not strangers anymore. Okay, that's that's not how it works, little girl. So, a spooky house you got here, Mitty. Um, high electrical build or something? Mommy just doesn't like the light anymore, that's fine. The woman sitting in the kitchen is your mom? Yep, it's my mommy, I love her. Oh, that's sweet. Only... What? No, nothing, it's alright. You can tell me anything, you know? What the hell, she doesn't even know me. Mommy won't play with me. Won't even talk with me. I tell her, come on, mommy, please, 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 please. But she just covers her face and starts crying. That does sound strange. I don't know, but it's boring here without her. I wish mommy would play with me. How do you know to open the door? Hey, do you know how to open the door? I need to be elsewhere. Mommy has the key. Just ask her. Okay, I'll talk to you later, little girl. Can I ask you something? Sure thing, Minnie. I made a delicious cake for mommy. Can you give it to her? Maybe then she'll play with me. Of course. Thank you. You're so nice. The little girl suddenly starts to cough in a quite intense manner. You realize now there's something strange about the way she speaks. Maybe it's because she's caught a cold, or maybe she just has an unusual voice. Are you sick? A little, but the doctor said there's nothing to worry about. It'll be over before I know it. Well, let's see that cake you made. All right. The girl leaves a circular box full of meticulously shredded paper colored with different crayons. It does look quite festive, though certainly inedible. Don't worry, girl. I'll feed this to your mommy in no time. Thanks. Do you need something else? I met your daughter. She asked me to give you something. What? No. Wait, what? What? She has your daughter, right? She... Oh, no. I mean, yes. I mean... You don't know whether she is your daughter or not? No. Is there something wrong with her? No, not with her. There's something wrong with this whole place. But I seem to be forgetting what. Yes, everything is so unclear. Unclear is an understatement. Your house is so dark I can barely see my own hands. Oh, sorry. I'm such a terrible housekeeper. I... It's just that they said someone's gonna help. And I'm sitting here and waiting. Not much else to do. So we would take the gift or not. What gift? Here, see, it's a cake. Your daughter worked hard to make it. You hold out the girl's creation. The woman stares at it for a moment, then reluctantly takes the box. She looks inside with a pained expression, a mixture of fear and disgust on her face. As if she as if the mischievous girl could hide a cockroach in there. Something tells you she's not going to enjoy that cake very much. What do you think? The woman suddenly starts fighting with tears. I don't know. It's very colorful. Well, I'll leave you be. Now, what about the key man? Hello again. Good news. I gave the cake to your mommy. Really? She took it? That's awesome. Did she like it? She was impressed? Uh, will she come to play now? I doubt so. Sorry, kid, but she doesn't seem to be very eager to get up from that magnificent stool of hers. Well, I know it won't be enough, so I made another gift. Another gift? Let's hope Mommy takes it better than the last one. It's a very special gift this time, something that can help Mommy's troubles here. A girl excitedly passes you another round box. Inside, you, inside, you find cut-out drawings of what appear to be medical tools and supplies, bandages, thermometers, syringes, and a stethoscope, and even a scalpel. There is also another load of shredded paper, this time colored to resemble pills of some kind. Very special is one way to put it. Oh, are you playing doctor now? Yep, mommy looks like she's in pain, so I made things that will help her. She can stitch her troubles with these tools. And if it won't be enough, the pills are there. Magical pills that can solve all your problems. I know pills like this exist. Mommy once told me about them. I have a bad feeling about this, but it doesn't look like I have another choice. Thanks, you have, you're a real friend. Do you need something else? I got something else for you. What? Your daughter asked me to give you another gift. It's a little more uh, imaginative. You give her this. You give the second work to her mother. The woman absentmindedly reaches out, but then her gaze falls upon the contents of the box, and her hand freezes in midair. 
She jerks as the gift slapped her across the face and then suddenly lets out a howl. Why are you doing this to me? Stop! Stop! I beg you! Calm down, lady. I'm not doing anything to you. I'm just passing along the stuff made by your daughter. She's not my daughter. She's my mother. What the hell? I was not expecting that. What? She's a little girl and you're a grown up... What? She's a little girl and you're a grown up woman. How can she be your mother? Well, with the, with the technology, my boy. Just look at her. Get a closer look. She's no little girl. She's an abomination. All right, calm down. I'll do as you say. It's hard enough without you wailing and yelling. Oh my god, I don't want to go back to the... Oh my... Oh. This is so creepy. This is a hard game. You strain your eyes as you approach Mitty, but the room is too damn dark to make out any details of her appearance. Annoyed by the constant lack of visibility, as well as the general lack of sense of the premises, you move towards the switch on the wall. Oh no, oh no! What? Seconds later, an involuntary gasp escapes your mouth. Every bit of Mitty's skin is covered with liver spots and deep wrinkles. She looks grotesque, like a genetic experiment gone wrong, or Benjamin Button making a cameo in a horror movie. Was a realization dawns on you, there was nothing wrong with her voice. It just wasn't the little girl's voice. It was the voice of an old, very sick woman. What? What the hell? Media, what's wrong with you? Nothing. I'm all right. Why? Your body's all wrinkled. You look like an old lady. That's because I'm ill at the moment. There's nothing to worry. I heard the doctor saying so. I heard it myself. The woman says you're her mother, not her daughter. Is that right? My mommy says so. That's a funny thing to say. What does she mean? I have no idea. I need to leave you for a moment, okay? What the hell, man? That was that was so creepy. This is messed up. Okay, let's go back to the mom, I guess. I mean, to the daughter. I'm sorry. What? This is, <laughs> this is still still sinking in. Lady, you've got some explaining to do. Why is your daughter covered with wrinkles? Is she not well? She's not my daughter. She's my mother. I already told you, but yes, yeah, she's seriously ill. A late stage of Alzheimer's disease. What the hell? Alzheimer's? Is she a bit too stable and convincing for Alzheimer's? That's because it wasn't just Alzheimer's. We tried surgery. They can heal all kinds of terminal illnesses these days. Well, not Alzheimer's yet. Not officially. Still in testing stage. But it's open for the public if you're willing to risk it. They said there's 90% chance of success. That's as good as certain, right? Well, strictly speaking, it's not. It just means 90% chance of success. I know, the doctors talked a lot about that. But how can you worry about statistics when your mother fades away in front of you? So what are you going to do now? Nothing. I'll just sit. They said the man from the agency can help me, but there's nothing left to do. If he comes, I'll recommend him to sit down too. What? And before the surgery, she wasn't a little girl before? No. She was just fading, not recognizing me, forgetting things, forgetting how to talk, drifting away. Well, then it was even worse, right? I mean, at least she's all cheerful and innocent now. No, it's more horrible than ever. She's delusional and she acts like a child. I hate kids. But why stop talking with her altogether? She may be delusional, but she's still your mother. No, I simply can't talk with her. It's a mockery. She's a kid, and I hate kids. Why would you hate kids? Because they're a burden. They scream and they shout and poop and pee and get sick all the time. They destroy your health and damage your psyche. They bleed their parents and then throw them away. Isn't that a bit too much? You were a kid once too. Oh no, I'm different. I never abandoned my mother. The only reason we raise kids is because we need to have someone replace us after death and keep the human race alive. But we're practically immortal now. We don't have to worry about kids much longer. What kind of crazy surgery was 
that to have such side effects. Brain surgery. And they are not side effects. They are results of failure. What can you do with a lab rat when the experiment goes wrong? Throw it away. I assume the surgery failed. Yes, it's beyond repair. The doctors don't know what went wrong and can't do anything about it. I found the strange pill in the living room alongside a booklet about euthanasia. Do you know anything about it? Euthanasia? I tried to get us a euthanasia pill, even sneak one, but the doctors wouldn't let me. They have dozens of chemicals that can kill you peacefully, but they're very good at controlling who gets them. The agency said they can get me one, though. And their man will have a pill. I wonder how it got there. You try to get one? You mean you want to euthanize your mother? I thought that might be the way, but I'll never be able to do it. How can you feed death to your own mother and then watch as he falls asleep forever? Impossible. I'd rather sit here paralyzed till I fall asleep forever. Yes, that would be much better. Oh my god. You don't have to do it yourself. Theoretically, what if I gave your mother the pill? No, of course not. It doesn't matter who gives it to her, it's just wrong. Yeah, what the hell. But you have to decide something. No, 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 never. I can't decide. I won't decide. I will just sit here till it all works out by itself. Yes, it all works out in the end somehow. You can't just sit. You'll both die if you just sit. That would be just the worst way. But why? Bad things happen when you try something. Nothing wrong will happen if I sit here. Now listen up, lady, and listen closely because I'm about to get enough of this. Yes? You're gonna get up from this chair, walk into your mother's room, and talk and play together to the heart's content. You need to suck it up, you hear me? Can I just sit here? I just wanna sit here, wanna... And don't give me this sitting bullshit. I'm tired of it. You think you have it hard? A lot of people have it hard. I know, wait. The human mind is fragile, and you get crazy and delusional in many ways. Sometimes, it looks like a nightmare coming true. But stopping and denying simply isn't the way. No, no, stop! Don't talk to me like that! No, it's you who needs to stop. Shut up, shut up! Don't talk to me! Would you suggest to swallow all the dirt around and ask for more? To keep functioning like a goddamn robot when the world crashes around you? You suck up yourself, mister! Get away from me now! Well, that, that did not go well, to say the least. You approach Mitty again, but the initial shock wore off. And you notice that she may not be so unnaturally grotesque after all. She's just a very short person, better by age and oldest. She could probably pass for a stereotypical old granny if it wasn't for her cheerful, girly behavior. Hello again! How are you holding up? I'm bored, nothing happens. Something's about to happen, alright. I'm not sure I want it, though. I want it. Better than sitting all day. How old are you, Mitty? I'm eight. Why? You don't feel older, like it's hard to move and you're tired all the time? I do, but that's just because I'm sick. You always feel tired when you're sick, right? Do you remember anything from before? Before you and Mommy stopped talking, I mean? Of course I do. We used to talk and play a lot. I enjoyed it. Mommy's always so nice. She never treated me like a kid. I hate it when people treat me like a kid. I'm not little. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Just look, hear me out. I know it's hard, and you're not even fully aware of your surroundings, but we need to talk it through. Yes? I think we should go there and play along. Pretend like she's your daughter now. But I can't. She thinks she's a kid. I hate kids. She's not a kid. She's your mother, and she needs you. Now more than ever. Isn't it what being family is all about, to help each other no matter what? But no, please, it's too hard. It is hard. It is horribly, unbelievably hard. I think it will be torture, and I can't even fathom how you feel. But it's torture you need to endure together, like family. But it's torture you need to endure together, like family. Please, oh, I beg you, please. She would have been proud of you, a daughter that never abandoned her until the very end. Nobody could wish for a better daughter. Oh, oh my god, I'll try. Thank you, now just be careful, one step at a time. The woman rises up from her stool with a huge effort and starts to slowly move towards the kitchen door, shaking badly but still maintaining her balance. You consider giving her a hand, but then conclude it might confuse and weaken her even more. 
It seems to you that each step takes a year. And by the time you reach the bedroom, you will be as old and wrinkled as her mother. Then again, after the talks about the future in your office, a sudden change of scenery, and this place is emotional turmoil, your perception of time is too messed up to give it any credit. You enter the bedroom just as a woman gets close enough for Mitty to notice her. The old lady's eyes light up, and she makes an effort to jump off the bed in excitement like a real little girl would do, but her health quickly betrays her, and she opts for a simple smile of recognition. It's kind of heartbreaking. Mommy! Hello, darling. Did you come to play? Uh, yes. Oh, wow, this is cool. I have so many games in mind, I don't know where to start. Listen, darling, let's play a special game. What kind of game? The game of switching roles. You will be my mother and I'll be your daughter. Okay, this must be fun. But I will be a good and happy mommy. I'm not going to cry and I will play with my daughter all the time. Let's play and play and play. Wow, I feel like a great mommy already. That's because you are. I mean, you will be. I mean... The woman collapses on her knees, unable to hold the weight of her own body any longer, places her head on the old lady's lap and starts to shake with silent sobs, but then stops quickly and abruptly, as if left with no energy to produce any movement at all. A paralyzing thought crosses your mind that she collapsed for good, or can collapse for good any moment now. That powers of one broken middle-aged woman are nowhere near enough to hold this twisted experiment for any meaningful amount of time. But you always give this thought away with all your might. You must believe that you've done the right thing. You have to believe. But then the woman falls asleep and her breath gets steady. While the old lady leans forward and starts to stroke her new mother's hair. An affectionate and peaceful expression on the wrinkled face. You hear a faint clicking noise coming from somewhere in the hallway. The front door you tried so fruitlessly to open before must be unlocked now. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Nice. Step out. You walk through the door and out of the building to find that the world outside looks just as dark and eerie as the four rooms from before. A silhouette of what appears to be Jackie nods and waves its hands towards a car so blurred it surely won't be able to take you anywhere. You take a seat anyway, and much to your surprise, the engine roars to life. Shadows of skyscrapers start to pass by the window, but all of them are just different variations of the mother-turned-daughter and daughter-turned-mother swirling in crazy dances, excitement, and welcome you into her household as a new family member. When the dimly lit houses finally give way to reality, you find yourself staring at a city skyline through a window wall apparently at a high floor of some building. Jackie stands nearby, looking tense, but much more composed and determined than she was back at the office. It appears she is really, it appears she's ready to answer a lot of questions and prepared that some won't be nice. Whatever happened to you was part of the plan. So I wasn't dreaming after all. No, sorry. What the hell was it then? The first problem. What? You're joking. What kind of problem is that? A real kind. A real kind? More like the sick kind. You people are all crazy here. Michael, please try to calm down. I will answer all your questions, but you need to ask them first. How did I appear in that house right when you pressed the button? How come you were with me before and not after? I programmed our time traveling routes this way. The technology allows us to define the destination very precisely. You appeared in that room. I appeared elsewhere. And then you closed the door and watched? Yes, I did. That part was for you alone to experience. But I'm helping you now. You will get closure together. You lied to me! You said that all the problems will be perfectly solvable. Yes, and that you can solve them with your mind, which is exactly what you did. I didn't solve it. I couldn't solve it. There was nothing left to solve, only to watch and suffer with them. You gave closure to a woman who was mentally paralyzed and overwhelmed. She couldn't get up from the chair. I thought it was coming to a utopia, not a horror freak show. I never said the future was perfect. The better the world appears, the more important it is to look at the problems with a straight eye. 
Humanity didn't come this far by being complacent. So this is the price? You're gonna put me through hell before I can live here? No, we're gonna put you through all kinds of things. But it's important to understand that even immortality won't solve all the troubles in the world. Or you're in for a big disappointment. Okay guys, so this game's getting pretty interesting. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys enjoyed the game. I'm gonna drop a link in the description so you guys can check it out if you're interested. Please leave a like if you enjoyed and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.